Downton Abbey entered a new era in the second film, and if you don't want to know what pushed them into a new era, then turn off this video right now, okay? We're going to get into some spoilers, okay? So go upstairs, go downstairs, get away from your phone, get away from your computer, hit stop, ring the bell, get the servants to take you somewhere else, I don't know. I'll give you a few more seconds to do what you're going to do to get away from this video, okay? Okay, here we go. It doesn't look good for Papa if she felt the need to keep it a secret. So what I, and most people, suspected in this movie, we said goodbye to Violet Crawley, played by Maggie Smith, in a very long goodbye. But with that, I will say goodnight and leave you to discuss my mysterious past. Now, we were lucky to get Maggie in these films because when the series wrapped in 2016, she told Graham Norton she was done. So are you, in a way, sort of glad that Downton's over? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I really am. As the story in the TV series spanned from 1912 to 1926, Maggie did a quick calculation of how old Violet must have been by the end of series six. By the time we finished, she must have been 110. <laughs> so I couldn't go on and on and on. Well, the show's creator, Julian Fellows, estimates it a little younger than that. He recently told USA Today, Assuming Violet was 77 at the beginning of the TV series, she's now in her 90s. I think that's enough, really. Having laid the groundwork for it in the first film, we couldn't have shirked it in the second? I don't know what shirked it means, but okay. If I tell you now, will you promise to keep it to yourself? I promise. Yeah, so there was that powerful scene in the first film where Violet tells Mary about her diagnosis, but you might know that Maggie actually changed her line from I don't have long to live, too. Uh, I may not have long to live. So all of a sudden, she wasn't ready to say goodbye just yet. But when a new era was coming, it was time to lay the Dowager Countess to rest. It's always such a challenge when there's a big change like that. And, you know, we've been doing the show for such a long time. Michelle Dockery talked about her on-screen grandma's death scene to Extra before the movie came out. So Michelle had to talk really vaguely to not spoil the emotional scene she was talking about. And um, it was emotional and sort of half the challenge is kind of keeping your own emotions at bay. Michelle told the LA Times, the silence on set, you could hear a pin drop and it had been building. I think it was midway through the shoot, but that anticipation leading up to it was so emotional. I was sort of dreading it actually. She's been part of these last 12 years. We just had to hold back the tears before we could then let it go. I remember Simon Curtis at one point coming up to me and Laura in that shot where we embraced each other. I remember Simon saying, you can let it go now. It makes me emotional just talking about it. A lot of us play characters who try not to show their emotions too much. So for me, yeah. it was like, yeah. you know, trying to hold it back as much as possible, but it was very moving. Not only was the focus of the scene emotionally draining, but because there were so many characters in the room, they had to shoot that scene over and over again to get enough coverage of every single character. So yeah, it was a little bit draining. But Hugh Bonneville says the mournful mood never changed. The challenge is to preserve a sense of respect in the scene like that. You don't have people shouting at you, move the camera this way. People had a certain amount of dignity and calm about it because it will be an iconic moment, certainly for us as a cast. But I think the collective experience allows you to feel the emotions that all the characters are experiencing. After the scene was over, the cast and crew gathered in Maggie's dressing room for a toast. What was that like for you as a cast, saying goodbye to such an integral part of Downton Abbey? I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I don't know if Hugh didn't want to talk about it to avoid spoilers, or you just couldn't emotionally go there again. You never thought to turn it down. Do I look as if I'd turned down a villa in the south of France? Now, since the Dowager Countess of Grantham is so famous for her one-liners, you can imagine the pressure that Julian Fellows felt to come up with her final one. So he came up with, and I wish the clip existed on, you know, the internet so I could show it to you. I have to say it. But yeah, so it was, uh, stop that noise, Danka. I can't hear myself die. And Julian told the LA Times, I remember when I found it, feeling relieved that I'd found her last line. And I wanted it to be funny because I thought the scene would be fairly... Oh, geez. Lacrimose? As indeed it is. I've never seen that word either. But it's nice to have just one laugh tucked into the middle of it. I thought that was good for her to go out undefeated. So, have we truly seen the last of Violet if Down continues? Julian told USA Today, I can't quite see Violet coming back as a ghost, although I have no doubt that Violet will haunt the proceedings. That's a slightly different thing. 
So I think he's saying that her presence will be felt, her spirit will be felt, but she won't physically be seen if Downton continues. So yeah, I think it was time for her to go. I mean, Rowdy is, with that first movie, that amazing scene with Mary, we kind of said goodbye to her there. It was a great moment to leave her on. She kind of passed the symbolic baton of Downton to Mary, and she watched her at the ball. It was a really beautiful moment. And so really, they could have started this movie with the Dowager already dead. So yeah, when this movie started, I was like, okay, yeah, she's probably gonna die in this movie. And then once we start, and obviously throughout the movie, they're setting up that she's gonna die. So once it started to get towards the conclusion, she had a scene with Mary, and yeah, that was an appropriate character for her to have her last scene with. And then the scene with Tom, I thought, ooh, that's an interesting choice to have that be the character is that uh, Maggie Smith has her last scene with. And then the most appropriate one was Isabel, and that one got me choked up because they've had such great scenes together. That would have been a great moment to end on. No, she's still alive. So yeah, so then we got that final scene where everyone is there, and she said everything possible to every single character We've all worked together for so long that it's very easy to access a feeling of emotion about each other in general. And then said the last line and I actually giggled out loud a little bit because it was just so theatrical. But I guess, I mean, she deserved a big send off, but it just, it seemed just extensive, the send off that it was. Um, but yeah, Violet got all the attention in the end. So I know some people are gonna love it. I just found it a little, drawn out and heavy handed. Do you agree? Or did you think it was the perfect send off for Violet? I'm still thinking I would be downstairs dressing as the upstairs for the movie within a movie, The Gambler. I love that. But yeah, let me hear your thoughts on saying goodbye to Violet.